this is the thing that, that the people don't understand when it comes to leads is there's this trigger, right? The Kraken's been released and they filled that out and that filling that out satisfied that emotion for a moment. That's important. That is important, right? So by the time you're calling them and reaching out to them, having this conversation with them, you don't realize that they had a temporary physiological, emotional satisfaction just from <laughs> requesting information. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. I'm here today with my man, Chris Beasy. How are you today, Chris? I am excited. Boom. Let's go. Let's Dropping start. science. So today is going to be interesting, fun episode. Uh, we're going to talk about why all leads suck. All of them. Every one of them. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about picking one lead over the other. Guess what? They all suck. And trying to dive into that, Chris, and trying to figure out why all leads suck. Well, I'll just tell you right now, because I know why they suck, right? Number one is they don't come in the moment I click the button to order them. I don't have all 75 or 100 or 20, whatever. I don't get them all instantly. Sometimes they take weeks depending on the lead. Exactly. Yeah. They're too expensive. They should all be a dollar. Or less. Every one of them, <laughs> right? Yes. Um, even, even other than that, like the leads I should buy, the client should have only ever filled out that one lead card or that one form forever. They should never even try to oh, fill out another one. Yes. So there should be a qualification for first and only time I've ever requested information. And that's it. Never again. That's it. But most importantly, like thinking of it as an agent, right? Why do all leads suck? Well, number one is because um, not everyone answers the first time I call on the first ring. Not everyone listens and understands me when I'm talking to them and they understand exactly where I'm coming from. They understand exactly what I'm trying to teach them. Not every lead trusts me undoubtedly. Like they should just know when Chris Ball calls that they trust you. Yeah. Right? Um, not everyone has time to talk. Right? They, they should... The moment that have, phone they rings... They should have set everything aside. Everything. They should have mm -hmm. their lunch break already dialed in <laughs> they should sit down that them. ham sandwich and they should be mm -hmm. they should be ready to go they should stop playing with their grandkids they should turn off the news they should yeah. put the rest of that cigarette out you know <laughs> yes. they, they, they should be able to do that they should share their emotions they should tell me what their bank accounts are and their social security numbers and all their information that we'll I need the for the application music behind you <laughs> and they should buy every time every time mm -hmm. and if they don't do that that lead is garbage it is it is, and the the uh, the idea that you're you're sharing here is um, is an idea of expectations. Oh, a hundred percent, guys, yeah. and, and and that's what mm. we want to segment in today. And if if you guys think that we're uh, we're at a, a convention or a rally right now, and all y'all are cheering and laughing and, <laughs> and and throwing your arms up and getting excitement, uh, I'm I'm happy about that. But we want to mm. figure out. Why do all leads suck? And, and, and what is the purpose behind this? And we just want to have a little conversation. Well, let's do this, okay? Well, we'll make a deal with you. Um, we will provide the lead that Zach is talking about, but it's going to be $14,987.68 for that lead. <laughs> is, that a good, is that a good deal? We're going to do that? Are you good with that? Yeah, that, that would be equivalent to like, me already like getting my grandma ready to buy a policy and then just letting you write her out. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's basically that, what that's it is. That's my lead program. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Sending Zach in to, uh, I to am prep completely, them up, relationships. And <laughs> I com I'm completely all for that. But if, if the truth is all leads are gold. They really are. They're, they're garbage and gold. They are garbage and they are gold. <laughs> that's right. And it all depends on uh, really – important factor, which is our expectations moving into this. Yes. Yeah. Which is saying, Chris, that every lead we work can be garbage or gold, depending on how you view that lead. Absolutely. Um, and here, if you want to write this down and put this somewhere so you see it all the time, whether it's in your car or next to your dialing session, 
a lead is simply an opportunity for a conversation. That's it. It's it's there's not much more to it, right? They've mm-hmm. they've requested they've requested information. They've taken the time to fill something out, whether it's a form or whether it's on uh, a form online or whether it's a direct mail piece. And they've sent that in requesting information. And all the expectation we can have is the opportunity to have a conversation. I think that that's a key word there. And that's really it. it and every time we I hear that, it makes me think of the old Honda Odyssey commercials where opportunity is knocking. Yeah, mm. You know, they used to do that. But yeah. um, literally, we used to bloody our knuckles out there knocking on, on doors. Mm-hmm. And to understand that a lead is an opportunity. Like, that's the point I want to hold on. It's an opportunity. It's not a guaranteed sale. It's not a written or a digital commitment to buying a policy from an agent. Right. It's nothing more than curiosity, interest, um, fear, vulnerability, um, I would take a second though. Those are very interesting polls. Mm-hmm. On one side, uh, curious curiosity, interest. Yeah. On the other side, fear, vulnerability. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like <laughs> those are heavy emotions. Yes. Right. And the beauty is that the fear and the vulnerability is what triggers all of this. Right. It triggers the interest and curiosity how to stop feeling this pain. Yeah. It, re- it releases that, that... The Kraken. The, the Kraken, right? <laughs> it it, it increases, uh, and I don't know if it's, it's, you know, not the dopamine, but it, you know, the... Yeah, uh, the Kraken is a drug, but similar to dopamine. <laughs> just way <laughs> off, sorry. Sorry, yeah, like, the, the jokes will run. Uh, um, but but it, it, it allows us, it makes us feel something that we don't want to feel. Yeah. It's slightly we're, uncomfortable. We're, it's like these chairs. Mm-hmm. Right, <laughs> it's like these chairs. Can we do something about that? <laughs> That's hilarious. And the the thing you're you're a hundred percent on Zach uh, is there's this feeling that they don't have the language for, mm-hmm. like, and it could be curiosity, um, checking into something. It could be that is triggered by an emotion of fear and vulnerability. Where do you think all this comes from? Like, where does it stem from? Like, well, it comes from, I mean, the relationships, the needs, things they see, the the experiences of their families, the, you know, they've lost somebody and, and there was a, a debt, there was, um, or, or, or shame and regret, the fact that they, you know, some folks didn't, should have taken care of this a long time ago. Yeah. They haven't yet. They don't know how. Um and and that can range from you know we talk a lot about final expense, but that could be mortgage protection or or IULs planning for your future, all that stuff. This is all applicable, you know. And yeah. but this is the thing that that the people don't understand when it comes to leads is there's this trigger, right? The kraken's been released, and they filled that out, and that filling that out satisfied that emotion for a moment. That's important. That is important, right? So by the time you're calling them and reaching out to them, having this conversation with them, you don't realize that they had a temporary physiological emotional satisfaction just from <laughs> requesting information. You just sounded really smart right there. <laughs> no, that, 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 that was awesome. And I had my glasses on. Are you ready to launch your insurance career? Excel Solutions is your go-to leader in life, accident, and health insurance pre-licensed training. Their cutting-edge e-learning platform is packed with rich content. Think interactive assessments, engaging videos, and customized learning paths all tailored to your learning style. Being students ourselves, we've trusted Excel now for years to deliver top-notch training, offering high pass rates. Their streamlined prep review courses and the exam simulator are really your secret weapons to nailing the state exam the very first time. Now, you thought it couldn't get any better. Well, it just did. Life Insurance Academy listeners, you guys, you receive an epic 50% discount, reducing the regular course fee from $199 to only $99. So, 
All you have to do is use partner code LIA at liapodcast.org slash Excel. Now Excel spells X-C-E-L. So don't think about it any longer. Dive headfirst into your insurance career with Excel Solutions premier pre-licensed training with that exclusive 50% discount just for you. Get the code, get licensed, and excel in your insurance career. Do you think when they fill that out, do you think they're telling anybody about it? Uh, probably in most cases, no. I think there, there are some cases. Why not? Because most people live in their heads, I think. You know, like like uh, if it were, you know, you're dealing with a senior couple and you're having the conversation, hey, I got this again, you know. Well, fill it out and see what it's about. <laughs> you know, there's that mm-hmm. conversation that's happening. Um there, there's this other factor too, Zach, that that we we talk we've talked about many times is people do not like talking about the end. Mm-mm. They do not like thinking about it. And if I talk to somebody about this, then I'm facing my own mortality. Yeah, and when you when you just look at that example, Chris, uh, from a final expense market, a wife most likely generally fills them out sixty percent of the time. They're they may have a fear or vulnerability if their husband is older, which generally is the case, or may has more health issues, which generally is the case, and men don't typically live as longer. Um, so there could be a vulnerability, a fear there that may not necessarily be shared on the same level as her husband, but mm-hmm. also if she communicates it with him, he may shut it down. It may make him feel some type of way. Like it, it could, um, it, it's, it's kind of this awkward unspoken fear, vulnerability, hurt that, that is in families. And the same could be with, uh, let's say uh, a single dad or grandpa and, and, and not really wanting it to mention to his kids mm-hmm. because they don't want to talk about it. They, they don't want to imagine him being gone. They don't want to imagine life yeah. without him or the struggles or visualizing, um, you know, one of the worst days of their life. So, so this, this trigger, this emotion that is based upon life experience, which is based upon sometimes either seeing or witnessing a family or family member um, going through this without insurance, but also on the flip side, seeing or seeing a family member go through this and they did have insurance. Either way, they're saying, oh crap, I need this. Mm-hmm. Um, but people are naturally um, introverted when it comes to their feelings and their vulnerabilities. We build walls, we build, we build shelters around what we want to communicate. And on the surface level, even to our family, it's fine, it's okay, I'm not that big a deal, you know, you, I'm all right. But to a stranger calling them or knocking on their door, it's even elevated to the fact that that moment has passed. They may have forgot yeah. about it. We may now be um, reminding them of it, getting them information now. But even though what they feel in here, their insides are saying, yes, I really want to figure, find out about this because I, I feel this vulnerable and this fear and this insecurity. But on the outside, most of the time, they're going to communicate, no, nah, I'm okay. I got that taken yeah. care of. I was just looking yeah. into it. I didn't yes. know what it was. Yes, absolutely. And but that and the important part about it, the problem is still there. A hundred percent. That problem is still there. And that's what makes it, Chris, the opportunity. Correct. Mm-hmm. And the opportunity, the challenge, and the beautiful part about life insurance, in my opinion, isn't necessarily selling a policy. It's being able to talk to the real person and talk to the emotions and the vulnerability underneath the smoke screen yeah. to be able to get past that defense mechanism, if you will, yeah. that everyone will naturally put up, even if they're going to hug you at the end of this. Mm-hmm. And we as agents, as new people, as beginners, we have to understand this. The biggest difference in a veteran of life insurance and a newbie is what they believe about what the client says not what the client feels. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. what they say and what they feel are usually different things. Yep, absolutely. And and I mean the the thing that I think that helps agents a lot is is breaking it down a little bit. And and that's why it's easy to say what what is a lead? Mm-hmm. A lead is simply uh the opportunity for a conversation, right? Mm-hmm. They they've sent a request and now 
the expectation of the client. These are two worlds meeting together. One is expectation of the of, of the prospect client. The other is the expectation of the agent. Prospect client expectation. I requested information. Right. Um, it should be delivered in a golden package. <laughs> That's right. With highlights on what to read, where they don't have to read any of the garbage, and it yes. the piece of paper needs to automatically decide which company, which plan, how much, who it's going to affect, and you just it probably it. should be free. And that, yeah, well, actually, if they just sent the briefcase full of money, with to the, pay for it, yeah, yeah, that that would solve everything, right? Absolutely. But they get you. <laughs> That's they're expecting the information. And so, yeah, I mean, think about it, guys. If we were real about it, so let's say we have a service that sends out the information to them and it's in uh, an envelope. Here's the information that you requested. We do. It's called the internet. <laughs> they open it. They look at it. They throw it away, right? Uh-huh. It's because it's confusing and they don't understand it. It's, it's a challenge. So the best way to service somebody in regards to insurance is for somebody to come alongside of them and educate them on their best options. Here's a question That's I it. have for all of our listeners. How many of you all actually have thought about what the client expectation is when they receive a phone call or when you yeah. show up at their door? How many of you thought from being in their shoes, what are they thinking, what are they feeling when they originally saw the lead and filled it out and then when you contacted them? Because that that is very, very different. Yes, yes. The other side, as we started this podcast off with, is the agent expectations. Yeah, let's right? talk about that. As we say, mm-hmm. the agent is expecting them to pick up. If I bought these leads, Chris, they're going to pick up on the very first dial, right? They're going to listen to me. They're going to understand me. They're automatically going to trust me because, you know, I, I, I'm Chris Ball, right? Um, that they have time for me, that it doesn't matter if this is going to take 10 minutes or two and a half hours. They're going to be there and they're not going to get tired. They're going to share all their emotions, who this is for, why it's important, why they need to do this and why they're going to keep it forever. They're going to probably pick the biggest premium and then they're going to give me all their account information before I even ask for it and everybody's going to sign up today. Yeah. So... That sounds like a heck of an opportunity, man. <laughs> right? Well, that's not even an opportunity at that point, right? <laughs> yes. Like that, like, Everybody would be doing it. <laughs> right. And, and, and so the longer, again, speaking to the veteran agents, that's not quite the expectation of them. Mm-hmm. But a new agent that's coming into this opportunity, they may not have been taught. It's not your fault. You're trying to learn this. You're mm-hmm. trying to figure it out. You see, buy leads. You you know, you make this many dials. You write this much business. You know, you buy your own island, buy your own plane. You know, mm-hmm. that that's just what the business we're in. But they don't really know any better. And when they dial those first dials, their expectations can be what we just talked about, where yeah. the clients are drastically on that other end. And there's a major disconnect. Um, let's, let's talk about that, that the proper agent expectation, right? Um, uh, you will find what you're looking for. You, you were talking earlier today about the power of the subconscious mind. Mm-hmm. And if you're, you know, you're thinking about buying, um, a, a Hummer or something like that, you, that Hummer came to your mind cause I placed it in there earlier. You did. Yeah. You had that, that conversation you're driving around all of a sudden you see them everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that that is the power of the subconscious mind. So if you, in your subconscious mind, you believed that the lead is exactly what you said it was, that you put in this amount of work, this this will come out of it, and I can I'm spinning in a field of daisies because I'm so excited because I have leads, you know. Yeah. Um, and then you start dialing. People are hanging up. You might get cussed at. Who knows? You know, knock on the door, slammed in your face, whatever whatever's happening. Um, the, that the expectation does change to this idea that, that all leads suck. And I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with saying, Hey, all, all the leads suck. That, that, that is true. The one thing that we have to remember in this, Chris, is they are people. Yeah. Like, again, a lead is a way it, it's, it's a lead is nothing more than an opportunity to have a conversation with someone regarding insurance. Right. Nothing more than that. Nothing less than that. Mm-hmm. Um, so at the end of the day, like the moment I make contact, the moment I see them at their home, I, I could care less about the lead. I don't care if the lead was purple. I don't care if it was pink. I don't care if it had 
my picture on it. I don't care if it had 15 questions. It doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. I'm now connected with a person that I know in their subconscious brain, my, not, not necessarily out of their mouth the moment I speak to them, but there's a vulnerability, there's a fear, there's, there's a way, and this family loves somebody mm -hmm. and they want to take care of them. My job is to figure out who they love, how they want to take care of them, and, and to, to do my best to educate them on the different options they have for that. Yeah. Um, that is the same if I run into somebody at the grocery store at the gas station, it's no different, right? There's still people with families. So that's an expectation that you can have. Right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, the only difference in talking to somebody at a gas station, um, is in about life insurance, not saying they don't need it, not saying they don't have it. They probably need it or have it or probably need Most. more. Right. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, yeah. everybody we talk mm -hmm. to, but the difference is, that they they express some curiosity, some interest, some confusion right. because of the fear, the vulnerability, right. and it's about the people in their life. It's not about the lead card. Right. It's not. Yeah. And um, so expectation wise, I love that Zach. That uh, I'm I'm going to talk to somebody who is loved or loves somebody, and there's a need. It's the only reason people That's buy it. insurance is love. Right. It's that simple. So. Um, I, I do think where the sucky part of the lead attitude comes from is a, a misunderstanding of I, when, when I training age, when I'm training agents, I, I'm typically telling them you have to have unquestionable confidence in something. Mm -hmm. You have to believe in something. So what is it you believe in? You need to believe in your opportunity or the market. You have to believe in the market that you serve, that you have something for them right? Mm -hmm. The next, you have to believe in your process, like your sales process and how it meets the need for the market. And finally, you have to believe in yourself that you are the one that is better than anybody who can meet the need of the people that you're, that you're talking to. Mm -hmm. And you will find what you look for. If you, if you take that person who has those beliefs and they're looking in an, uh, at a group of people who have, they're loved and they love people and they uh, have a need that's been verbal, communicated. You're going to, if you have that as your foundation, you are going to do a lot of good stuff. Absolutely. And, and now I want to bring up another point. Um, for those new agents or existing agents that... Um, start dialing, start getting some rejection. Um, you know, the first 20 to 30 calls is always the toughest, right? Yeah. But the fear that will probably creep into your mind is, oh my gosh, what if nobody answers? What if nobody wants to buy? How much did I spend on these leads? Am I going to lose money? I have to make this work. I used everything I got to buy this, buy this lead batch. I don't know what I'm going to do. If I can't, if I can't make this work, where, where am I going to, where am I going to go? Do I need to look at another career? You're thinking about all this in your first 30 <laughs> minutes of dialing for the very first time on that Monday of buying those leads. And you will find that. But it's true. <laughs> like, you know, how many people are literally having that same conversation with themselves? Yeah. And one thing uh, that I would want everybody to do is to, Understand when you're brand new, yes, we want to get you a point where you're you're thriving and, and chasing your dreams and your why and your purpose in this, but we're not we're not blind to the fact that you have to survive at the beginning and the only thing you can think about is turning a profit on this lead batch just to survive to next week. We're not blind to that. One thing that can help you is is number one, you need to figure out how much money you are making per application. Okay? Then you'll be able to add activity to that and you'll figure out how much money you're going to make per presentation you present regardless if they buy or not. Then you will start to figure out how much money you make per dial that you call regardless if they pick up or not. not that, what that will do is it will change your mindset on that it, it would eliminate and prevent that negative thought process jumping in because you know, regardless if they answered or not, you made a dollar. 
Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So think of it this way. And it doesn't have to be a dollar. It could be 25 cents. It could be a dollar 50. Heck, it could be $25, right? right? Mm-hmm. Um, that Those are all variable numbers. But if you knew, Chris, if, if I just told you, hey, come join my company. I got this opportunity for you. I don't want you to worry about anything. Chris, I just want to let you know, every dial that you make today, regardless what happens, I give you a dollar twenty-five. That's it. That's all you got to know. So, however you finish the day, I just want you to follow the strip and do these instructions. However far you get, great. Don't worry about it. But you get a dollar twenty-five uh, for every time you dial that phone number. Okay, go. Yeah, it's doable. Would if the first ten of them say, Chris, you, you feel I'm, the same, right? Mm-hmm. You know, there. I don't. I don't like you. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't. The truth is that is the truth, Mm -hmm. right? That is actually what happens. And you can figure that out with easy math. Let's say you're brand new. Let's say you don't know your numbers. Let's say you haven't had success. Most likely you were invited to this opportunity by somebody that is doing it, that is leading you, that is your mentor. If you're not, yeah, give us a call, right? But um, if you're like, you can use their numbers, do their math, do their dial, do their activity. But if, if you're going to, use their numbers as your mental support, then do their activity and do their investment. Amen. That's really good. And yeah. and this would eliminate all of that. Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, for, in this conversation, we've addressed multiple things. The thing I will say that really stand out is the proper mindset, um, the volume of leads and mm-hmm. the activity. Uh you know, we, we've talked about how the law of large numbers works in, in life insurance. It, I mean, it's what makes life insurance work, that you have enough people in the system that it tips, that it tips towards pop profitability. The same is true on leads. You yeah. know, you have to have enough leads. If you have 10 leads and you, you're calling those same 10 leads over and over and over again, then, yeah, that can, that can feel like you're in the grind for sure. Um, and and it well regardless of your volume, but you that the volume needs to tip in your your favor that you're giving yourself enough opportunities to pick up the phone or open the door. Yes. So that's 100%. that's an important piece too. Well, Chris, let's talk about a couple of these variables. Okay. Right. Um, because at the at the end of this game, what we want and what everybody should know and what we preach is you should know your number. You should know what you need to hit this week, this month, you, you should know what our target goal is. We don't just want to dial for no reason, mm-hmm. right? Um, that's going to hold us in this game when we have simple running for it. But So let's just say we have our number, whatever that is. But leads could be low cost or high cost, right? And that's typically based upon um, speed to you, right? If you want them extremely fast and low buyer intent, they're probably going to be very low cost. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. No problem. In order to have that number you need to hit, you need to have high volume, high activity. Correct. Mm Makes sense? Which which costs time. So low cost, low intent. Yeah. You need high volume, high activity. Yes. Very simple. You can achieve the same gold number you need. On the other end, we can have high cost leads, which typically means high buyer intent. Um which to translate that is, it's, they're still people. They're not better than the other people. Their problem that they need to solve isn't bigger than other people's problems. Yeah. Um, there's just more fields and interest in funnels that they, they went through more to fill out this lead. Correct. So there, there may be an opportunity for a stronger, emo, stronger emotional connection to taking care of this need. High buyer intent. Right. Typically, it's going to generate higher cost. In order to hit that same number, you may be able to get away with lower volume and slightly lower activity, right? Be- yeah. Because now... I like high, high volume, high activity. <laughs> right? You could do that too. Yeah. You yeah. could do that uh-huh. too. The, the point is, in both of these scenarios, and, and, and all of you guys can look at your own situation, but both in those scenarios, we have a target number that we are trying to hit and we have the same exact lead budget regardless of the strategy we're losing. We're spending the same. We're either doing um, low cost with lower intent with high volume and high activity, which is going to be time, right? Correct. Um, and Or we have high cost, higher intent with lower 
um, volume and, and lower activity. Okay, so you're getting a little bit of that time back, but it's the same spin and it's the same goal. Right. Where you, if your leads suck, it's probably because your ratio doesn't measure up, which means you're probably getting low cost with low buyer intent leads, mm -hmm. but you're doing, you're, you're doing low volume. Yeah. It's forcing you to have low activity. You may say I'm working my tail off or I want to work my tail off, but nobody's answering. You've called the same 20 leads for three weeks. It's low activity mm -hmm. in terms of good, healthy activity. Right. Even if you want to have the highest activity in the world, it, it, it's, it's off, right? And that's because you got a low volume of the low intent, low expense leads, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Or you have high cost leads with, with higher intent, but let's say you have no activity and you think you're going to pop in and dial three yeah, or four or work every other day, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that's going to, that's going to cause an issue as well. You're going to turn it on and off. There's no consistency involved in this. Mm -hmm. Which is a key, key, key piece to this. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, and I will say you, you are going to find what you're looking for in this. Mm -hmm. And and it's all attached to your attitude and how you feel about the opportunity, about the leads. The one thing I do talk with agents about is a, a thought, but you think about something affects your attitude, your attitude affects your actions, actions, habits, and that's your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my wife and I are huge Survivor fans. Uh, hopefully it gets me on the show. Hey, Jeff. Um, <laughs> can you imagine me on that show? Get him um, on the show, Adam. Good night. Um we were we were kind of watching that the other night. It was kind of funny to me. I was, they do this uh, deal where they can um, auction for food, right? They've been starving for weeks at this point, and there's an auction, but they don't have any money. Is there any good food? <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, but it's a surprise. It could be uh, it could be a fish eye covered up, but you're auctioning on something you don't know what it is, uh, or it's a cheeseburger. It's like a lead. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like it's literally like a lead. Yeah, so. They have to find the money for this auction, and it's in tiny little tubes laying around the jungle. There's probably $5,000 worth of cash laying out in the jungle, and there are people running all over the place. There's this one girl. She's picking up, uh, she's picking up money all over. She's finding it. Everywhere she looks, she's grabbing it, and people are like, what the heck? You know? And a few of them are finding some other things. Then there's this other guy. He's walking around, and he's looking. He can't find anything. He didn't find any. None. And the funny thing is because, you know, we're the audience, the camera's following him. And then the camera will pan just to the right a little bit. And sitting on a rock is a little tube with money in it. And he's like, he's literally moping and whining to people. Yeah, I can't find anything. And they're walking up. You didn't find anything yet? This lady walked up to him and said that. And he said, nope. And then she looked down and grabbed one off a rock that was right in front of him. But at the end of the contest, he didn't get any food. He didn't get anything. And he's, he would have said the leads suck. <laughs> That's what to him, he's the lead suck guy, and everybody else is eating. Please tell me this wasn't you as a five year old boy at the Easter egg hunt. <laughs> no, dude, no, I, I'll crush an Easter egg hunt. <laughs> Give me to your Easter egg hunt, I'll prove it. <laughs> That's awesome. But I, I, you know, I appreciate it, Chris. And, and, and the important thing is, regardless if you think the leads are gold or you think the leads are garbage, it doesn't matter. Uh, these are people that need help. Yep. Um, we need to figure out a way. We need to adjust our mindset. We need to understand, is, is our lead ratio proper? Are we looking at leads and the expectations the right way? Uh, leads are nothing more than an opportunity to have a conversation with someone. Um, so we hope this episode was helpful for you. Um, if there's anything you need from us, uh, please reach out. Do not hesitate. Let us know. Um, and while you're at it, just go ahead and punch that subscribe button. Uh, it helps us out more than you know. It allows us to keep generating more comment, answering more questions for you guys as well. Um, but go ahead and like and share it too. And if you guys have any Easter egg hunts coming up, Chris can prove it to you. Uh, he is pretty quick. Um, you know, they quick call him hands. The, surprisingly quick hands. He's like a 10 second hurricane, but <laughs> it's all good. But uh, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thank you for hanging out with us today.